this out. I mean, check that out. <laughs> Five bucks. And two of them from the restore here in town. Batteries were all leaking in it, uh, in both of them actually, but should be pretty easy to fix up. Um, these are for the Wii um, as a fitness tracker, I guess. Basically, it's load cells in it. It's a scale, and it just senses the weight distribution. But this is a cheap and easy set of load cells that you can use for under a kegerator or whatever um, to measure weight. And we should be able to interface these with a microcontroller. Five bucks. Like, load cells are worth that. Today being the 27th is invoice day. Uh, usually 26th, 27th, I send out all the invoices for the, the projects and stuff on the channel, get all the book work caught up. And in this case, I'm actually, uh, this is the timeline for the Probe Master PCB project, which will be already live by the time you see this video. But that's how, uh, that's how I roll. Uh, back to editing, invoices are sent, and uh, bookkeeping is done for the month. And uh, time to back to edit. I've been learning Altium Designer and I'm finding it pretty easy to get around. The P key, you can place components, but the really cool thing and different for me here is if it doesn't have the component, you can search for it and it finds all kinds of variants that you can just drag and drop over to your schematic. No searching around Git or messing around trying to import footprints and different libraries. It just works. Really, really cool. I'm liking it. Starting to think that this is a running joke. How many vlogs do you think it'll take before I finish the CNC? Put your guesses down below. Uh, an order came in, actually two orders. Um, an order for a rescue arrived and I know we are low on rescue inventory. I think is on the docket today is to build another couple of rescue kits and obviously get one shipped out. There we go. Here's a rescue. Everything that we need to make a rescue project. We'll clone the kit and get some more boards on the go. And another one actually got ordered to EIR kit, so a motion sensor, ESP8266 kit. If you've got any ideas on um, how I can do a little easier, better inventory control or anything like that, I'm, I'm all ears. I'm always just looking to learn new things. This is our second last PIR sensor kit. So we might as well make some more of those too, which involves a 3D printed case and some parts. I think what I'll do is do those. These are the inventory for the rescue and this is how I've been doing it. I've just kept the inventory separate and I've just noted what I have of each. So rescue has a GPS, Bluetooth module not required, that's an extra. ESP cam is an extra. So SD card reader, D1 Mini Pro, an OLED, SD cards, resistors and boards. And um, I just sort of put everything in here. I can't help but think that there's probably a little bit better way uh, than this, but this is what works for me. So we'll just cross off a couple and make some kits. We need to doctor up the ESP8266s. These need the antenna mod. What we have to do is change the shunt over from the internal ceramic antenna on the board to this external. Uh, antenna connector for the external antenna to receive, uh, well, people's cell phones. So uh, we'll swap that over because end users, this is what I do for them, why they can buy a kit for me. And among other things, we'll do the PCB and the service mount resistor and everything on that too. find yourself doing these surface mount resistors on these boards or any others the this mg chemicals no clean flux paste works really really well for me i'm pretty happy with how it performs but cheap stuff works in a pinch too so grab yourself cheap stuff from ebay and don't feel bad about that either doing these i use the the big hdmi uh, micro my stereoscopic trinocular microscope here <laughs> 
And like that, all three done deal. Uh, I did do videos on this microscope. If you guys didn't see it, uh, check it out. This thing is worth getting uh, for anybody who's doing any amount of electronics. The price is very reasonable, even if you do low volume like what I do. Um, just grab one. Also, worthy of mention, I showed these years ago on the channel. These alcohol pump bottles are the greatest thing for working with stuff like this. Uh, you just dispense enough isopropyl that it's all that you need. It doesn't make a, a huge mess unless you spill it like I just did. And uh, you can always just keep dispensing what you need and, and the bottle doesn't go dry on you. And if you knock it over, it doesn't spill the entire bottle. These things work just great. You can buy a cheap version of them um, on Amazon as well for nail salons and stuff that are only like a buck or two or on eBay. Um, it, I do sell them in my store as well, linked below, um, which is just fulfilled by Amazon. For low volume electronics work, anything to make your life easier is just money in the bank. There's a tip too. If you do electronics kits or anything, or even if you're storing stuff for a long time, these little brother label things are just awesome. What's super cool is to do versions. Um, the firmware, this is Arduino sketch that I run, is version 2.6 on these boards because that's what I'm about to flash to them right now. I put that right on the packaging. That way, like this is a year old now. I know exactly what version's on there. So if I do update um, the firmware, the Arduino, I can quickly look at my inventory and see what's on them. And that goes for like, not just if you're selling kits, but even if you have components kicking around, like, uh, like actually this, that is run by 80, uh, ESP8266. And there's no easy way to tell what firmware is on that and say I wanted to know. These little stickers are just awesome and I put them inside of things um, to know what they were. Actually, here, I'll show you. Complete sidetrack, but inside of the original rescue ground, check this out. A prototype tag with PCB layout ID, uh, not firmware in this case, just the PCB ID, the date, and my contact info just in case I'd ever need it. But um, then I always know what it is and when I made it. And you'd be surprised as I get older, I find that information more and more valuable. But this is the rescue ground version, which is exactly what we're packaging up here. It's just in a big box with a big Yagi antenna that works uh, <laughs> insanely well to find cell phones out there. It works really good. <laughs> One last tip on these. I just finished programming these with the Rescue firmware, um, the same firmware, the 2.6 that's on the packaging, of course. I have one more way of tracking things, and this might might help you as well. What I do is get these like El Cheapo hologram stickers, any kind of sticker would do. And this is what I use to denote that I have flashed it with firmware. I don't know whether it's really necessary, but it works for me to tell at a glance that I've been into this package and flashed the firmware on this particular board. Um, it's just what I do. Maybe it'll work for you. If you're doing mass production or any home production at all, get yourself a printer with one of these ultra base style beds on it. Um, they're different. The ultra base is the any cubic brand. Um, see, the Creality has their own too, but it's it comes off the bed just that easy, and that's what you want with uh, if you're producing things. Um, kits or product or whatever you want it to be quick and easy and all I do this is just a, one of these pumps again and I, I just clean this with rubbing alcohol 
because there is a, a tiny bit of um, oil comes out of PLA. And then uh, you get rid of that and you're all set.